uh, take a moment and pray. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we give you the glory for this wonderful time that we have in this conference. Thank you for the opportunity to stand here, to to bring forth your word, to bring forth your word to your people. I pray, God, that as we speak and as we engage, my God, may they, may we understand what you are saying to us, O oh Lord, and may we be inspired to burst and move by the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you and we give you the glory because we expect a mighty move in this conference today and for the rest of the days that are remaining. We thank you and we give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, I was born in Niseme. Niseme, Niseme. Chinese. Niseme. I was born in 1990. I just said 1990. I was born in 1990. I was born in 1990. Anything. You are just old. Because there are they're like big people. <laughs> they're like big ones. I'm like, no one was born that late. But here we are. <laughs> so I was born in 1996. Uh, not so long ago. It was just the other day. Meaning I am currently 25. 25 years old. Uh, I was born to one David Juma and another Asunta Juma in somewhere in Kikuyu. That's where I was born at around midnight. And... Um, when I was born, I, I don't remember much, but when I was got to like three, four, there, roundabout, is when I got my first encounter with the Lord. I know I was very young, but I remember to this day, like, I draw for you what I saw and what happened. I can. I can draw for you what I saw. I was maybe four, around there. And in this dream... I, I was in a kitchen. I was really small. I was like here. So I was really small. And then in this dream, I, I saw Jesus. Now, my mom later asked me, Uli Jesus? And I just said, I just knew. Nilijua tu ni Jesus. Like the way he, I just knew this is the Lord. And Jesus came. So I was in a kitchen. There were cabinets, cabinets, cabinets. So Nikokwa kitchen. And the cabinets were cream. They were cream in color. And I was standing there, and Jesus came, and he knelt down beside. I know you, when someone proposes, they go down on one knee, like that. So Jesus came, and he knelt down beside me, and he, he held my back like this, and he gave me milk to drink. Now, this milk was not in a... There's a squeezy. Kitambo, back in my day, Back in my day, kulikuwa na zile vikombe, it, it was not a, a silicone munyonyi. It was a, a plastic cup. The cover was hard. And then it was kulikuwa na ndaivi na tushimo. Muna agree ni kama muna zijua? Muna zijua? Yeah, so that is... <laughs> that is... <laughs> that is what I... That is what Jesus fed me milk with. And he fed me milk and I woke up. And immediately I went to my mom and I was like, Mom, nimeona Jesus. And she looked at this four-year-old like, Ukoshua. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, yes, I have, I have seen in the, in the language that I could speak at uh, as a four-year-old. I said, I've seen Jesus. I was with Jesus. She's like, eh, hey, what happened? I told her exactly what happened. And years later, she, she, she kept asking me, ile dream I'm like, Mom. Mbaka wa leo neza kwambia what exactly what that dream was. And I was very young. So that is my first encounter with the Lord. That was the first encounter I had with Jesus. And I, I didn't get saved. Okay, I don't remember getting saved until I was, in 2009, I was 13. 96 to 29 minus 96. I think I was 13. I was 13. But before that, I had several things that were happening to me as a young, as a young, very young person that could have only been explained as a godly encounter or a divine encounter. And I, one of those examples is, I think I was still very young, maybe six or five, and we didn't have a car. We didn't have a car. And me, I could see other pastors, they had cars. So me, I No, what is he not doing? 
Because as we don't have a car, and other pastors when in your conferences, na magari sisi tu kapa na tu na tembea tu meshuka matatu. So, so, so I, I, I used to ask every time we're going to church or going somewhere. Mom would tell me, ah, get ready. We are good. Tuna kutayarisha na uliza. Tunenda wapi? Tunenda huku. Tunenda aje? Na matatu. Every time. That was the answer. Na matatu. Na matatu. So one time, I, 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 I told, the, we, we went for a conference. I, th- I think we were at the conference in Thika. Actually, somewhere in Thika. And um, if I'm not wrong, mom, mama, eh. <laughs> and... Well, we were in the conference. We were having, I think, dinner or we were having a meal. And at the table, I'm very young, maybe six or five. And at the table, I'm, I, tell, I tell my parents, Mom, we are going to get a car. And this car will be white. And this car will not be like Pastor so-and-so. I mentioned a pastor that I knew that had a car. I said, this car will not be like Pastor so-and-so's car. This car will be white and it will be like this. And we will have this car. Do you know the same week at that conference, my parents were blessed with a white car. Not like Pastor So-and-so's car, but the car that I described. And we left that conference driving what I saw the Lord give us. And it came to pass. Yes, clap for Jesus. (laughs) Clap for Jesus, not for me. (laughs) And these things were happening and they would happen uh, maybe after a couple of years or like they kept happening where I would prophesy or I would say something. And I think early my parents just realized this girl just has a call of God on her life because they would go to preach. They would go to a mission and my mom is a singer and back then she used to sing more than she does now. Now I'm a preacher, but she's actually a singer. And so she would sing before my dad would preach. So I could just stage Anaimba, and then because I'm, I'm there, na na kimba na, na panda stage as a kayanga, I actually have a photo where I'm his mama na niko hapa, I'm this, I'm this tall according to her height, na mshika mgu, na ni mechukua mic, so tunaimba na yeye. So, that thing, I think they just noticed, this girl hapa, sasa, ya mesha shika ikitu, so, let's just train her, let's just help her to get to where God is, is looking like she's taking her. Amen? And then one time, uh, when I was 13, I, I decided to get saved. Now, the circumstances around my getting saved were not uh, typical. Like, it was not in a service where I'm just like, oh, God, save me. It was none of that. <laughs> it, was in a, it was in a morning. And the night before, I had gotten into trouble with my mom. I was very young. So I had gotten my first phone. Do not get a phone when you're that young. It is just disaster. Don't even want. So the rule was, don't talk to boys. That was the rule. Don't talk to boys, no matter the time of day. So I see at here at Usiku, just do not talk to boys with this phone. Mimi ni nani? Who, who, is, who is me? <laughs> One night, I was just talking on the phone. So I was upstairs. My mom from downstairs, I was kuna ka voice uko juu, kanaongea. Na sister ke na job, maybe I'm a lala. So ni nani anongelesha at this time of night? So I can eat a shela, kashuka chini. And she's like, uliko na unongelesha nani kwa simu. So, sasa ni najua, I am in trouble. And I'm like, uh, I was just talking to a friend. Pigia uyo mtu. Sasa, si unasikia ilidunda, roho ikidunda. Si una, you can just hear. And so I was like, Ma, but you know, no, it's just a, no, call that person. No, wake a loudspeaker. Eh, sawa, nikapiga simu, roho iko just, oh, Jesus. And eventually the person picked up, akasikia, Hello? Hey, she does. So, and you see, the, the, it's worse when una chapo hapo hapo. It's, it's okay if you're chapoing there, there, but ilea has semi key to end that too. And you can just tell. He don't do enough on gawas. Because now that's a mental battle in your, like, what is going to happen? Like, so I saw the disappointment, and I think the thing that really touched me and helped me to change my ways was the disappointment I saw in my mother's eyes on her face. I saw such disappointment that Elini break to Roho Kabisa. So she confiscated my phone, of course, and I went upstairs. So the next morning, I woke up feeling so convicted. And then I woke up feeling I was crying. 
And then my room was next to my dad's room. So I, I woke up. I was on my bed. I was crying. And then I heard my dad leave his room. And I'm like, dad, dad, come. So he, he entered my room quickly. And then he was in a rush. So this is what he was doing on my bed. He was wearing his socks. He was like, eh, miambie. I think he was going for a meeting. He was in a rush. So I'm, eventually I'm like, Dad, I want to get saved. And then he stopped. He stopped. He looked at me. He said, Mama Sheila, Mama Sheila, come on. Sasa, <laughs> anagita ule madhe mwenye. You know? So she's like, he's like, kuja, kuja. So my mom came upstairs and... And he said she wants to get saved. So I don't know what my mom thought. <laughs> Maybe she's like, oh, Dave, I'm I know what she's doing. So eventually I knelt down. He prayed for me. And then he led me in the sinner's prayer and I got saved. And I remember when he prayed for me, there's something that I'll never forget that he said. He said, Lord, I have led so many people to you. Today I am leading my own daughter. That thing, I was just like, ah, Lord. here I am, Jesus. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> I was just like, take me, Lord, I'm yours. <laughs> anyway, I got saved. Dad left. So, I got saved. I got saved. But let me tell you, yo, she did get saved. I got saved. I got saved about that thing. I got do anything. But it worked. You see, I got saved for maybe, maybe you can say those are the wrong reasons. Maybe you can. Let's say you can. But it has worked. Here I am today. Talking about this same Jesus had saved me. Talking about and singing about him and serving him. You know, and it's the same case with my dad. Dad aliokoka, just because he aliona brother came when he was chasing a name and amenda mbele kokoka. Sasa kase ma, kwa wewe amekoka, Santa chiza na nani? Akenda, akenda kokoka. Akenda kokoka. Sema, akisema hata mimi basi. Ka, ka pastor Jiji amenda kwa kwa hata mimi hata ninende. That's the reason he got saved. And you can see where he is right now. So the reason does not really, the, the thing that matters is let Jesus come into your heart. And what he does to you will change your life. And that's why we say come as you are, but you cannot stay as you are because it's not possible. Boy, Jesus, holy. It's not possible to stay as you are because what Jesus comes into your life and does is to change you. He transforms you. He transforms your desires. He transforms and changes what you even want. You know, he, you will start behaving in a way you don't even understand. Once you get saved and once the Holy Ghost come, comes into your life, you become a new creation. And that's what the, the word says. That's what the Bible says. You become someone new. The old has passed. Behold, the, the new has come. That was when I was 13. And then we progressed, progressed. I went to high school. Um, in high school is when I, I, I you know, um, my gifting was nurtured. My singing gift was nurtured. We used to have a chapel, which is like a service on Wednesday. Eventually, I became the present worship leader. Uh, I began winning competitions. By God's grace, went to South Africa uh, because of singing. Um, but I never, there was, not, there was no time I remember singing because... Because at the ministry, I was singing because I felt like I can sing. So, because I felt like I can sing, I, and, and that's the reason, by the way, I never released any music when I was young. Because my mom knew, and she doesn't understand the full extent of what ministry is and standing before people to pour out the gift and the life of God in you. She doesn't really understand that. And actually, it's true because I did not join the worship team here at Life Church until maybe six years ago. Yeah, I, I was not part of the worship team. And even when I joined, I did not start by leading songs at it because I'm the pastor's kid. At this one, I it did not happen like that. And even when I started to, to lead songs, there are days I would, I would, I would lead a, a service. Tunenda home, mama me kasirika. I'm like, nini ni sasa ni mefanya. I was just, you know, she's like, were you really in the spirit? Hmm? Were you really in the spirit? Did you know what you were doing? Not at you limba vibaya. No, singing you can sing. Lakini, did you know what you were doing? And then, and then you know, the mama, okay, those days, because she doesn't, I guess, I don't know why. But those days, anaka hapo, na unaimba. And if you make a mistake and open your eyes and look at her, she's like, 
Not at you, not at you because you are singing badly, but she's uh, she's what dad says googling in the spirit. Um sana na fanya nini? Is does she because there's a weight. There is such a weight. See at you not umepatiwa microphone una una feel ah una bebewa bag una patiwa maji na coaster poi una feel there is such a weight and i learned that from such a young age because me, serving god and not just on the pulpit that serving god in wherever you are it should be taken with absolute responsibility absolute reverence absolute uh um what is the word you take it seriously take it absolutely like, like it is a job that you have to do for the king of kings for the lord of lords for the great i am this is not uh, your boss in the office even though that one you will you should treat them with respect now how much more god in heaven and so the very first time i can say i i began to sing properly is in 2016 so when people tell ask me how long have you been singing i normally say since 2016 and um 2016 is the first time I got uh, the opportunity to to join a group that was opening for Sinach and we, she was coming to Kenya for Praise Fest and so I I the, the group asked me to join them let me tell you that day I was happy Niliona to added to the group which group Sinach G what what I don't even think I've ever deleted that group Mbakaleo like it's still on my phone like what were really left me by Doniko just so that I can remember <laughs> the feeling I felt <laughs> as a young 20 year old girl i was 20 years as a young 20 year old girl of being given the opportunity to do this mighty thing and it was such a wonderful experience it was such a wonderful experience however i did not receive a call into ministry until 2017 february that is the first time the lord called me and said you are called i have called you to be a worship minister to the nations now I I don't want to go into details of how this happened and some of you may be wondering now how do I get called now how does that even happen for me it can happen in different ways god can use anything god can use anyone to do that but for me it happened in a dream and in the dream I saw myself I was in a very big concert hall and I was right at the back and when I was at the back I was lifting my hands and there was worship going on on stage and I was lifting my hands I was not even wonder thinking about anything else and as I was lifting my hands the music stopped and niko uko nyuma but on stage I can see one of the let me just say her name I can see Sinatra on the stage she's on the grand piano and on stage is a group of other singers So the music stopped and she called me she's like you you are the back you come so I went on stage and I went to where she was and she said join us and I looked at the the rest of the music ministers on stage and the dream ended but I didn't think anything about it that morning after the dream I woke up I had a studio session somewhere after the session the producer asked me what is it that you want to do with your music what is the goal unataka kufanya nini na music yako kasi mimi nikamwambia i want to write music for the body of christ to use to praise god and he asked me like sinach i said yes i didn't think anything about it that was the first day i met my husband so that was the first date so after your st- session is when i was going for my first date with caleb So I go to this date. So isile maswali za kujuana ehe favorite color ehe 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 unapenda kula nini ehe ehe So he asked me the same question that that producer asked me. He's like, "So what do you want to do with your music?" Same question. And I he, uh, I told him the same thing I told the producer. I said, "I want to write music for the body of Christ to use to praise God." He's like, "Oh, like Sinach immediately the lord spoke to me and said i have called you as a worship minister to the nations and that's when uh, i was in my final year of law school and so i'm like okay so i'm called and then so ni do okay so i i didn't know okay what is the next step eventually later that year god opened a door for me to go to worship school that's a whole other story that i will not get into but i went to worship school in florida for a year and a half and uh when it was time for me to come back i was asking the lord again okay so nimekuja worship school i have learned i have robobobod i have been encountered i have done yes so okay nenda kenya sasa nenda kufanya nini what is the plan 
And immediately, I remember it was a Friday, the Friday before I came back and the Lord started speaking to me, downloading to me exactly what I'm going to do. He said, you're going to do the encounter. You're going to do this. These are the songs. Da, 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 da. This is what will happen. And exactly as the Lord had said, I got to Kenya and I began to work on the vision and the dream that God had given to me. And in 2020 March, we recorded my first album by, by God's grace. And we recorded the encounter live. It was something, I, please clap if you're all glory to God. <laughs> and we recorded the first album. At that time, I was now 23 when we recorded this album. Um, we did a whole, I had never done anything like that. It was, I, I, I think maybe I didn't see the magnitude of what it was, but looking back, you're like, wait, that was a lot of work, but it was all by God's grace. And we released the first album last year and we are continuing in this journey and we are doing what God is telling us to do and we are dreaming big and we are busting a move. Amen. So I said all that to encourage someone here that God will give you an assignment to do. And in fact, he has that assignment already planned for you. But it is your part, it is your responsibility to go and search that out, to find out what that is. I cannot tell you what that is unless the, word go, the Lord gives me a word of knowledge. But it is your responsibility to go search it out, to go pray, to go study the word and get that assignment from God and then do it. There's nothing much to it but just doing it. I upon me rhyme. There's nothing much to it. Just just do what God tells you to do. Amen? Now, uh, in, the, in the short time that I have, I want to talk about busting a move, but busting a move has to start from somewhere. It must come. I, I, you don't just bust a move. You don't just wake up and do something great. It does not happen like that. You don't just wake up and then you go and fulfill the call of God on your life. There has to be a process. There has to be something that happens. There has to be a beginning point. And um, I want to talk about the power of imagination. That is, that is my topic. The power of imagination. And how imagination creates manifestation. Now, I'm not talking about the manifesting to Nonanga Instagram. Oh, manifesting a trip to Mombasa. Oh, manifesting... Now, that is some new age stuff that you don't want to get into. And you see, the devil has nothing original. So he will take something that God has created and turn it around and use it for himself. And he makes it weird. Tell your neighbor, don't be weird. Yeah, don't be weird. You're being weird when you do those things. We're manifesting. No, 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 no. We don't do those things. Yeah, so don't be weird. Now, I want us to go to... 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. If we can get it on the screens, I'm a, I can open it. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. All right. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I'm carnal. Depends on in a group of schools. I'm a, hmm? secondary. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For the pulling down, for pulling down strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down arguments. Now I want you to read this in KJV. KJV, please. Transitena from verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And here, verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, no, verse 4, let's go to verse 4. If you need... Mighty weapons. You see, the Bible says our weapons are not carnal, meaning they're not kawaida, and, but they are mighty through God. Now, these weapons are for doing certain things, for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Uh -huh, verse 5. 
eh? and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If you need mighty weapons, the Bible is telling us you need mighty weapons to cast down imaginations, then these imaginations must be something powerful. If you need mighty weapons to cast down imaginations, these imaginations must be something powerful. And this, why we, we are told to cast down imaginations, it says every high thing and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, it's because there are, there are imaginations that go against the will of God for your life. There are imaginations that go against the word of God. There are imaginations that go against everything that God has said in his word and has said to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you might be sitting there and you're just imagining yourself dying in an accident. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about thinking. I'm talking about imagining. And let's define what imagination is. Imagination is the action of forming new ideas. The action of forming new ideas or images of um, external ob objects not present to the senses. That is a definition. The action of forming new ideas or images of external objects not present to the senses, so not present to your eyesight. So it's not there in front of you, but it is in your mind. You're imagining it. Yeah? So if you're imagining yourself dying in an accident, you have created something already. You have created an image. Yeah? You have created an image of death. You have created an image of an accident. You have created an image of destruction. Now, these things come from someone who, the Bible says, comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And that's the devil. So when you're imagining such things, you are imagining something that is exalting itself against the word of God or above the word of God and what God says concerning about you. Because he said with long life, he will satisfy you. He says that no uh, the plague shall not come near thy dwelling. He says that no weapon formed and fashioned against you shall prosper. So you're sitting there imagining something that is absolutely against. And that's why you need weapons. Because these things, imaginations are things in your head that you create. That if you do not take care of, they will manifest. Yeah, they will. And I want you to know that imagination is part of faith. It's part of faith. Hebrews 11.1. 1. This one you should say offhead. Come on. Is this something you've heard through Sunday school? And ask your Sunday school teacher. What were you doing? But let us go there for the sake. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So if you can't see something in the physical, where are you seeing it? In your mind. If you can't see this, if this hall was empty, but you are in, you, the, the Bible says it is substance. It is some substance of, uh, you hope as a pastor to have a full hall, full of people, full of people that you are preaching to, people who are coming to get saved. So if it's not there in the physical, where is it? Where is it? But because the Bible said it is substance. Therefore, you have to imagine this place. Yani, you create, you create Wanjiko. She's there. And Wanjiko is lifting her hands up to come and answer the altar call to get saved. And Wanjiko is now, her life is being changed. She's getting a better job. She's bringing in tithe. She, her life is being transformed. And Wanjiko is now discipling other people. And this church all of a sudden is full in your mind. It has to happen in your mind first. It has to happen in your spirit. In your spirit, man. It is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You see, in this generation, we have very many people who want to wait until they are healed to say they are healed. Yeah? When the Bible says we walk not by, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. You walk by faith and not by seeing. So if you're waiting to have your, to, to, to be healed, or you, if you're waiting to receive the manifestation of the healing that God has for you, before you see yourself healed, it won't work. It will not, because you see, when normally, okay, when I used to get headaches, I, I rebuke them, I do not get them anymore in Jesus' name. 
But when I used to get headaches or or any kind of, or I'm or I'm sick with a flu or whatever, I just imagine somewhere in heaven when you open my file, you see Sheila Juma, you see status born again, status for health healed. That's what I imagine. Status for health healed. Status for wealth prosperous. Status for what else? What else has God done for me? Status for marriage wonderful. <laughs> yeah? That is my status. I don't care what is happening here or what I am seeing according to my status in heaven. According to my file in heaven if I have one. My status does not change based on my circumstances or based on my experience. And that's why let, the Bible says, let every man be a liar, but God be true. The mistake we do is that we, we form doctrine based on our experience. Yeah? So now because you have prayed and you, you don't feel better after one minute, ah, ifanyangi, ah, your Bible ata ifanyangi, ata ukiomba ita, auta, una waste your time. You form doctrine based on your experience and based on what you see when it really should be the opposite. What you believe for, what God had said, what your status is in heaven is what you are on earth. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. Amen? Let's pause. tell your neighbor what you have learned so far. Mwambia tu, ni melan, this and this and this. Na kwambie kuna watu wananiangalia tu. Eh eh. All right. You have to see it with your spiritual eyes first before you see it with your physical eyes. And I'll give you an example. I learned this thing when I was very young. When we, when we were, when I was young, maybe between seven and uh, ten, around there. I, I can't remember the exact age. But we, we didn't have a fridge. Now, this may, may seem like a, a bogus example, but listen to me. We didn't have a fridge. So, it came time where we actually needed one. Like, unanuavitu zinaribika, you need a fridge to put these things you know, to preserve these things. So it became an actual need. It was not just a want or a luxury. It became a need that we, we needed. So what my mom did is she told, called me and my sister and she said, she brought us to the kitchen and she said, Unona, Unona hapa, Ivi, hapa, hapa, hapa. Do you fridge? Mtu wasi kanyage hapo? Mtu wasi smame hapo? Mtu wasi pass hapo, wasi tembe hapo? Fridge yangu iku hapo. So me and my sister are looking at my mom like, what are you saying? <laughs> so she's saying, do you have a fridge? Now, in the physical, hakuna fridge, hakuna, nani for true, hakuna. So if, my, if I make a mistake of just, hey, Shali will, my sister will shout, mom, Sheila na kanyaka fridge. <laughs> mom, Sheila na mama kwa fridge. And it became a habit. It became a, yani, you can't do it. Ata mgeni ya kikuja, au simame hapo, kuna fridge, hapo kuna fridge. Tunampeleke penye kusimama ama usikanyage hapo, hapo kuna fridge. Na hakuna fridge, but kuna fridge. Hapo kuna fridge, usimame hapo. So, what happened is, my mom was creating an image. There was an image being created. There was a fridge there. And we've been, aki for sure, it became a thing. Like in my mind, hakuna kitu ngeniambia, uniambia tuna fridge. Tuko nayo. You know, it did not take two weeks. It did not take two weeks. A fridge was rolled into our house. And where we had said the fridge would be is where the fridge went. And by the way, your fridge, but it was somewhere. And we just look at it when we can. And we see this is a testimony of faith. And for me, I remember that was my first lesson on faith. That was my first lesson on faith as a, young, as a young girl. And I carried that thing with me everywhere. I remember we did not have a fridge, but we said we will get one. And we believed we had one. Because, you see, God said, what you want and what you need, I already know. And I will give it to you. So, we believed. See, God, And we need it. And it fulfills the desires of our heart. So, we have it. So, we have it. So, I apply that to everything. Everything. 
the dreams and visions God has given to me. What I need money. I really do need money. But God has said you will do this. And so I have it. I have it. Oh yeah. And and sometimes if I if I'm going to buy something, na hiyo kitu ni expensive. Unajua I I told my dad the other day eh, before I got married na I used to be the one doing shopping ya nyumba so ananipatia pesa or mama ananipatia pesa I go do shopping na ninaenda nachukua tu because I know what we buy I just go picking eh 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 I pick I pick I go to the counter na lipa kama pesa ijatosha mom imebaki anatuma na lipa naenda home siku hizi sasa si mimi nafanya ngia shopping ya nyumba yangu you know the first time I went to a supermarket and to do shopping for our house nilikuwa naangalia her pick ni 500 What do you mean? Na ile hapi nilikuwa nanunua for home. Ati ati cooking oil. 900 aki for sure I did not know. 900 cooking oil or whatever I I was so surprised at these prices. But anyway, when I go to buy something that is expensive or I don't have the money for that in that expense or it would be a stretch for me to pay for that for that money. I go I go pay I na pay a pesa kwa cashier and in my heart I say there's more where that came from. Oh yeah. There is more where that came from. Ataka niko na so kwa bag. There's so much more from where that came from because I have it. I may not have it in the physical but I have it and it will be given to me and I will have it physically very soon. Mtashanga. Na msishange mkiona niki cruise uko nje by the way. Don't be shocked. Just know I I I had it before I, I had it. Oh yeah. I had it before I had it. Abraham believed in God who calls those things that are not as though they did. When when God was telling Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations. Sasa hiyo ni kusema like what does many nations look like? So when God tell, tells Abraham you're going to be the father of many nations he tells him he, he God knows he, I need to give I need to give this guy an image I need to I need to show him what I mean Ebu look at the stars can you count them you can't can you look at the sand can you count it no that's how that's how many they are your descendants your children that's how many they are looking at the stars you can you really cannot count but that creates an image that creates an imagination in your mind as to what god is saying as to what god has for me amen now let's jump to genesis chapter 11 from verse 1 we're going to read mbaka 6 oh, my time is short wow hey. genesis chapter 11 from verse 1 to 6 and it says and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech verse two. and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of shina and they dwelt there verse 3 and they said one to another go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and they and they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar mm-hmm. and they said go to let us build us a city Remember they are saying to themselves let us build up a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth verse 5 and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded now wait wait go back to verse 5 the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the the children of men builded had they finished building so they they were just saying to themselves they were just saying let us build this is what we'll build a tower that goes all the way a city that looks like this so when god is coming to see what they had builded what is he coming to see he is coming to see the tower and the city they had built in their minds he came to see nini 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 kitu wamefanya wamefanya si wanataka kufanya wamefanya what is this that they have built verse 6 and the lord said behold the people is one and they have all one language and this they began to 
they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them what which they have imagined to do let's read that again everyone one two three and the lord said behold the people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have Remember when you were, you were not saved? Because I, I want to believe people here are saved and if you're not, we will give you an opportunity to do get saved. But remember when you were not saved, ukasema, ile siku nitashikuli mse. Mazinta mgonga. Mazinta, yani? And eventually, you've brought that dream to, to pass when you, when you were not saved. Ulipata na you started a fight. You don't even know where that came from, but, sha! Mse ako chini. Hmm? We take our imagination so lightly that we give it to the devil. Umnachukua tu, unashikisema shika. Shika. Do with it what you want. But what if we took our imagination and used it for God? And used it for the purposes of God? You know, there, there is something the Lord has, uh, has given me to do. And he gave me a vision and I saw. I saw clear as day what I needed to do. And what I need to do. And it's not a small thing, but I keep that image in my mind because when I do, I keep working at it. I keep working at it. I keep working at this vision until I finally see. Ex- and I will see exactly what the Lord has shown me. I will see exactly what God has given me. Why? Because I have the power of the Holy Spirit. Because greater is he who lives inside of me than he who is in the world. I have the power given to me. The Bible says, uh, uh, now unto him uh, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask think and there's some versions that even say imagine so if you're there just if you're in this if you're in this meeting just thinking about it and the bible is saying he's able to do exceedingly abundantly the most God can do for you is just give you another chicken yeah because He's, he's saying, whatever you think or imagine, I'm able to exceed that. I am able to go beyond that. Yeah? So it is my responsibility to sit down to meditate. To just see. To see. Let me tell you me the things I think about. I can't even share. Because you will think I'm crazy. As early as I think this morning, there's this one dream I have and there's one... This one vision I have in my mind that is so crazy, but I tell you for sure. Me, the God I believe in. Me, the God. One day, one day that vision in my mind, as crazy as it is, I can be in a matatu and I just put music on and I'm just seeing. I'm just seeing. There's many people who are asked in the Bible, what do you see? Jeremiah was asked, what are you seeing? What do you see? Are you seeing correctly? Are you seeing through the eyes of faith? I'm going to give one example and then I'm going to finish. Uh, one time, I, <laughs> I, was, I was a young girl and I, I, I had a, a person who I used to look up to. Her name was Mahalia, Mahalia Buchanan. She's a singer in South Africa. And I, she, she has one album, but and she used to work with Joya Celebration, another, another singing group. Uko. But I used to love her. I don't know what I do. Like I used to be such a fan and I used to love her music. And then my, my desire was I would like to BGV her. Now BGV is unona kuna leader hapa na kuna wenye wanasimamanga hapa. Si mnajua hiyo. Sasa hawa wenye wako hapa wanaitangwa BGV background vocalist. Sasa mimi my desire was I wanted to be her background vocalist. That was what I wanted to do. So what I would do, <laughs> I would be alone in my room. I would put her music on and I'd pretend I have a mic. You laugh, but I would pretend I have... Now, by the way, I'm to room and I'm to sing. But I would pretend I had a mic and I would start singing. I would start... I would start uh, singing her, what her BGVs are singing. And I'd pretend I have a mic and I'd be dancing and be, I'd be doing the moves. So I'm in the... In South African language, in Zulu. I would do that so many times. I can't count the number of times I did that. 
I would do that so many times. I think I was maybe, I don't know. I was a teen. I was a young teen. I was really young. And I would do that so many times. Fast forward to 2016. And I, I'm in college and I'm preparing to go to school in the morning. And, and uh, either I was just from the shower or, I, no, I was just from the shower. So I'm getting ready to, to leave. And I see, a, no, 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 no. Before I went to the shower, I, I was, I think, on Facebook or on Instagram. I can't remember. And I saw a poster. I saw a poster that said Mahalia Buchanan and another singer who they work with called Zolani is coming to Kenya. Niliona a poster. Because I'm a god. I don't know what you will do. I don't know how you will make this work. But you, you just know. You, you just know, God. You, you just know. I went to shower. I went to shower. I came back to my room. As I was preparing, I got a phone call. And on this call, I, I hear it's a man. So I'm like, hello, hello. Uh, is this Sheila Juma? I'm like, yes. Say so. At that point, I, like... Like I said, I started singing in 2017. This was December. They were coming for a crossover service at Nairobi Chapel. So this is December. The most I have done is sing Praise Fest in November. Was it November or October? I think November. So, there's no one who knows me. If they are looking for a singer, they, they call me. They, they, no one knew me. So, in the call, is this Sheila Juma? Yes. Now... Uh, we have a, a thing we are doing. This is Pastor So and So from Nairobi Chapel. We have a thing that we are doing um, on the 31st, a crossover, a, a, a Mahalia Karibu Nyanguke. Because I just knew what you were going to tell me. And we, 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 are, we are doing a set before the singers come. Before uh, Mahalia and Zolani come on stage, we are doing a set and we are looking for a soprano. And I'm like, okay. He's like, yeah, and after we do the set, we will be the same team that will be doing background vocals for them. Well, let me tell you. I was like, sir, stop, stop. Just, what do you need me? Where, where can I, where is rehearsal? When am I coming? When can I? Okay, I did not seem that desperate, but in my mind, I was like, whoa. So he's like, yeah, we were having a meeting and we were, we were needing another soprano and we were wondering, uh, who, who can come? And someone just mentioned your name, Sheila. You can call Sheila. And I'm like, who is this woman? Like, my name is being mentioned in such a group. What do you mean? What do you mean? And imagine, eventually the day came. And I was right there on that stage. And Mahalia was right there on that stage. And I was doing those moves I was doing when I was a teenager. And I was believing her with all my heart. With all my heart. All glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. Start thinking. Start imagining. Oh yeah. And cast those things that are, those imaginations that are exalting themselves up above the knowledge of God. And start Im imagining things that God has said to you. The dreams that God has put. You think you have desires of your own that are godly. No, God is the one who comes to put those desires in your heart. The Bible says, create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. But the Bible also says that it is I who comes to work in you, both to will and to do what pleases me. So God will come, put you, put the desires in your heart. And not only that, he will make you want to do it and he will help you to do it. He will help you to bust a move. He will help you to achieve the goals and the purposes that he has set for your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Have we learned something? But I know God has been glorified for sure. For sure. Amen. So my, my charge to you is for you to bust a move. It must come from somewhere. You don't just wake up and it happens. You must have a desire. You must have a dream. You must engage your imagination. Just like the way that fridge was not there, but eventually God gave it to us. You have to activate your faith. That is what activating your faith is. Amen? Let's stand up. I want us to take some 
short time and pray and just ask the Lord if I can have someone on the keyboard. Copy Devi. Ah, Sasa Devi. If I, I, I want us to just ask the Lord to help us to take out everything that is not of him that is in us and to put in everything that he has for us in our hearts. You know there's a story I like and we won't go into it but Josiah there's a there's a there's a, a, a man in the Bible called Josiah. Before Josiah was born I think in 1 Kings there was a man of God who was praying and this man of God he was at the altar and before he gave the sacrifice or something he started to prophesy and he he prophesied and said a day is coming when just a man Uh, 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 someone called Josiah will be born and Josiah will do one, two, three, four, five. And in, I think, Chronicles, either second or first Chronicles, Josiah is eventually born. And Josiah becomes king at eight years old. And the Bible says that at eight years old, he began to, uh, uh, yeah, he began to seek the Lord. Now, I don't know if Josiah knew what had been prophesied about him. I don't know if Josiah had heard or read somewhere what God wanted to do with him because it had already been prophesied by this other man of God in 1st Kings or 2nd Kings. And Josiah began to seek the Lord at 8 years old. And the Bible says at 12 years old, he began to do the things that the man of God had prophesied. At 12 years old, that is 4 years later, meaning he sought the Lord for 4 years. He sought the Lord for four years and early he began to do what God had ordained and created him to do. And the Bible says he reigned for 31 years. So can you imagine if at his 31st year of reigning he is when he began to seek the Lord. Is when he began to seek God for for what what is your plan for me as the king of 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 this nation? Right now what is your plan for me? But the Bible says at 8 he began to seek the Lord and in 4 years he began to do what God had ordained him to do. So I want you to pray and ask the Lord as you are taking out everything that is not of you, put in the desires that you want me to have. Put in your vision for my life. What is it that has been prophesied about me? What is it these plans and these thoughts that you have towards me? What are they? What do you, what am I here for? How can I how can I serve the purposes of the kingdom of God on this earth? Come on begin to pray and ask the Lord as you dedicate yourself to seek him, as you dedicate yourself to love him and to seek his plan for your life. Ask him, God, what is it that you want me to do? How can I bust a move for you in my generation? What can I do? Oh my God, reveal your plan for my life. He may not give you everything at once, but he may he will start giving you step by step, step by step, day by day, year by year. In the mighty name of Jesus, cry out to the Lord. Dedicate yourself and say, God, I choose to seek you while I'm still young. I choose to seek you for my destiny while I'm still young. I choose to become who you want me to become while I am still young. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will not let anyone despise me because of my age. I will not let anyone or anything come in the way of your plans and your destiny and your plan for my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will do what you have for me to do. I will go where you have for me to go. I will say what you have for me to say. I am a sign and a wonder in my generation. I am a sign and a wonder in my generation. I am called. I am created for such a time as this. I carry a solution. I carry an answer to the problems of this world. God put me here. God put you here for such a time as now. God put you here because of a reason. Find what that reason is. You You have to go to God to find what that reason is. To the glory and honor of your name, my God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that as we seek you, my Father, as we love you, Jesus, as we spend time in your presence, as we meditate on your goodness, as we meditate on your word, my Father, may you begin to implant and to download your vision for our lives my father in the mighty name of Jesus i thank you for the grace i thank you for the anointing i thank you for your power the power and the fire of the holy spirit that is within me that i am able my god to do everything that you have called me to do in the mighty name of Jesus i cannot be stopped the powers of darkness cannot stop me as i delight myself in the lord as i dwell in the secret place of the most high as i abide under the shadow of the mighty hallelujah shaka talama shayanda 
Rika to rika tandele besianda Roko taya mashande de kende Mado rika taya bashata Laba zoto kota ya zikanda Roko ndari masianda ya mashia lamande Roko taya mashakata We bless your name Jesus We depend and fully rely on you my God Do what you want in our lives we surrender We surrender our will We surrender our purposes And we ask you to come and do what you want to do In the mighty name of Jesus Hallelujah Zaraba kotali bashanda ya mandele Kesetie Roko taya bazika nala mande Roko ndere mekanda na mazika Zoto lobo shia rana na ma Reka tala mashia ndaya Rika zori bababa Reka ndala mashaya Ronda rabazi andai Roko sata Shaya ndara basikata Reka tala mazikete We give you the glory God We give you the glory We give you the glory For the mighty things my God For the mighty things my Father That you are doing and are going to do in and through our lives We bless your name Jesus 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 Oh Rika Talama Shayanda Rika Talama Nderekeziata We bless your name Lord Randa Mashata At the center of it all It's you that I see It's you that I see oh. At the center of it all It's you that I see It's you that I Yes, Lord, at the center of my life, at the center of it all, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, yeah. hey, at the center of my destiny, yes. hey, it's you that I see. Big 
bigger than the biggest You are stronger There is power, there is power in your name. 